What's up, Sim Racers? This is Larry TJR Sim. Oh, you can only see half my face. What's up, Sim Racers? This is Larry TJR Sim here. And uh, today we're going to convert over the Fnatic McLaren uh, GT3 wheel. I love this wheel on my uh, Fnatic wheel base, but I want to convert it over to the uh, AccuForce Sim Experience in the background here. And uh, this is what we're going to do. So I got the hub from SRM, where's my camera there? SRM, and uh, they sent it over actually really, really fast, and uh, which is great because it's coming from uh, overseas. But a uh, high quality piece, a uh, very high quality cable here, and uh, so I don't think we're gonna have any breakage. But basically, essentially, what this does is it takes all the information that you queue up in your uh, software for Fnatic, like while on PC. Uh, in, in this instance is that uh, it'll convert all these over to USB channels and so hence I'm plugging it into a USB. You can get different connectors uh, watch Sim Racing Garage's uh, teardown on his. He actually goes through it really well and uh, helped me actually to uh, figure out how to do it myself here so thank you for doing that video. He did it a long time ago but you know it's a great thing about YouTube is these videos stay up forever and it becomes very handy so anyway, I'm going to convert it over. Uh, what this basically comes with is two patterns here, an outer pattern for a bigger rim, and then a, uh, well, a disconnect rather, a quick connect, and then the inner one for another one. This bolt pattern here on this side, this is just going to go to your wheelbase itself. Uh, and this is actually a really nice carbon fiber uh, plate so that part right there you see the thickness here is, is carbon fiber and the rest is uh, like Delron uh, material so pretty heavy-duty stuff here and uh, I didn't get a spacer or anything it's just a stock I don't want it further out uh, because it gets pretty cramped in my rig as it is here now this essentially what we're gonna do is plug this into the uh, board itself on the fanatic wheel so pretty easy uh, SRM uh, or an SRM, yeah, SRM makes it actually uh, plug and play experience. You just have to tear down your old wheel uh, to get to it. So that's what we're going to do. And uh, real quickly, what this is going to connect to is my BNG. I had them send me a BNG quick disconnect, and uh, this has two bolt patterns on it. This particular piece is going to utilize the inner bolt pattern and. Uh, you can pretty much line it up any way you want it. I figured out that the way I want it, being that my USB box is over to the right, is I'm going to plug it into these inner, let me get it here, these inner holes there like it's supposed to be. And it comes with a supplied hardware for you. Actually, it comes with three of these. Where are my camera at? Three of these stainless steel bolts. And uh, it's not focusing. Focus. Anyway, you get it. They're bolts, okay? <laughs> Hex head bolts. Uh, these are three millimeters, and then it comes with the four millimeter ones that are actually going to screw uh, this down to the base itself. Uh, also, with the collar, like I explained in my unboxing, it comes with a collar on it uh, to mount to your wheel. You don't need that, so you can just pop that off. You just push this little recess in here, and oops, let me push it in. Boom! Did like that, man comes off got an extra one okay all right so let's get into it let's get into the tear down of this and see what it's all about okay okay come back so after watching his video and stuff I he took off the back portion first but you notice in his video he had some bent pins and that's because he was laying it down and it bent one of the pins okay I'm going to take this off last, just learning from his experience, and uh, I'm going to, just to protect my pins and stuff. Uh, you're not actually going to utilize any of this stuff anyways, but it'll come off, and uh, you'll have to remember to take, I'll have to remember to take this off too, because that connects to the front board itself. With the tools that are needed are a 4 millimeter wrench, an Allen head wrench, a 3 millimeter, and a... Uh, Maybe a little pry bar for the for the little uh, rotary buttons that come off. Oh, and a and a T10 for these 
bolts here. There's like, uh, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten of them. So that'll come off. So anyway, let's get after it. And just like that, it is a keyed switch. I'll set this over here. So two. Make sure I'm in camera. Another one. If I can get in here. All right. And the third one. They're all keyed. Need a little bit more light. There you go. All keyed switches. Blue one on the bottom. Remember your two white ones are on top. Oh, you know what? I'm also going to need a, I think he said a 10 millimeter socket and a little 8 millimeters on the insides here. And you want to leave all the button caps on there uh, because what happens is when you pull this front case uh, cover off, these button caps will hold your actual buttons behind it in place. So let me grab my wrench here and we'll continue. All right. Okay, so I got my little uh, socket here. And actually, uh, being that this is such a tight little area here to get a socket in it, I actually just pulled a half inch and it fit in there just, just fine, but just turn it off that way. And I pulled off the one button here to see what size socket I needed for sure on there. And lo and behold, I don't even have the screws in there for this toggle switch up here. So I kind of thought it was overkill anyway since you have these buttons here. But, you know, it's missing. Maybe it's on the other one I didn't look at. Oops, I'm oh, screwing the button here. All right. And this is just your nut and your uh, little lock washer there. Put it over here on my plate, little magnet plate. Let's get to the next ones here. And I'm not going to speed up the video. I'm going to make you have to watch this whole thing. Ha ha. No, just kidding. It <laughs> won't take but a second, guys. Same thing. Better light here. And again, those. All right, so got the three buttons off there. I'm gonna pull off these rubbers here, which I've got one of them off. Uh, I keep forgetting where my camera is, right there. Oh. Almost lost my rubber. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm trying to roll this little sucker out of there. It is a little bit of a pain to get out. There's rubber, and yep, look, I don't have little uh, nuts in there. No nuts, no washers or anything like that, which, okay, whatever. It's not there. His had it, why didn't mine? Anyway, is what it is. Okay, so we got the nuts off of here. Now we just got to remove the 10 plates, or 10, sorry, 10 plates, the 10 uh, screws, which is going to use a T10. And I'm wondering if I should just go ahead and start loosening these up yet, but I really don't need to yet. I just need to, I can pull that out last. So anyway. Let's get to it here. Make sure I got it right. That's tight. Pull off my T10. I'll do it with this hand so you can see me. So much quicker this way. I really think it's cool that SRM, you know, I'm sure there's other companies, other companies that do it too, but you know, make these conversions because Fanatic makes some really great wheels. And to be able to convert it for like an OSW or a direct drive wheel is, is pretty damn awesome. 
All right, so I got all that off, all 10 of them. I'm gonna go ahead and remember to pull this key off the back because that is holding it on. This is the key for uh, your tool set. So pull that off and it should come right off, which it does, look at that. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All righty. And the P buttons, of course, fall out and the N for like neutral, fall out the back. Set them aside there so I don't lose them. But you notice that the other button plates or the other buttons did not fall out. They would, you can see, it would easily fall out if I didn't have that cap on there. And so that would be a pain, right? The, <laughs> I have to relocate all these dang buttons. Anyway, so just put the caps on there. That's what the back side of it looks like. Just all plastic. So nicely done. It's you know it's a pretty plate. So set that aside. Now we get to the inside, the nitty gritty, the board itself. Look at that. It's so pretty. At the LCD, now I did notice on his video, he didn't really need to take that off, so I'm not going to. And it does have this green tattletale stuff to let you know when you pulled something apart, uh, which, you know, you really don't need to pull this board out, I don't think. I may need to be able to fish this out and around underneath there. Uh, I'm actually kind of hoping I don't have to, so let's see. I'm gonna finagle with this loose here. And it's pretty tight, to be honest with you. There we go. Boom, that came off pretty easy. Pretty easy. Comes off there. It does have another screw right there. Now it's time to pull the back off. And I may have to pull some screws off to get this out of the way, but we'll see. Let's go to the back real quick here. This is really a four mil, but my collar's in the way for using my wrench, so I'm gonna have to use my little shorty here. Uh, my shorty has these little angles on there, so you can do it in an, at an angle. So I don't have a, uh, a wrench on top for it, so I have to do this the old fashioned way. Sure to hang on to your Sagadaic cap screws. You won't need them back in here uh, because it comes, like I said, it comes with supplied ones uh, from Sim Experience. I'm sorry, Sim Experience. Uh, Sim Racing Machines. Again. These are all on pretty, pretty easy. So don't lose your washers. They're not too, too tight. Probably from all the vibration I have in my rig. <laughs> Vibrated up everything loose. All the transducers going that missing one right here in the front let's see how it comes off here all right so slide right off the top there is your stock QR that you get from fanatic uh, with an option for my case uh, but yeah that's it hundred dollar option and then you got the inners here, which this is going to come out. This whole thing is going to come out, actually. And these are probably a three. Three mil, yep. Pull this off. Real quick. Long, long screws, actually.
come out pretty dang easy. Just all really long screws. It's just barely snug on there. I mean, it's not something that needs to be tight. Oh, so, that's them. Now you got this washer that goes on there. Don't need that right now either. And now the plug itself pulls out. Okay. And of course it's connected to the wire back over here. As I pull on it, you can see that move. And I'm hoping I can slide it out. This is what I'm hoping for. <laughs> move this magnet plate out of the way a little bit. Let's see if we can't be sneaky and get it slid out. A little wiggle wiggle, a little wiggle wiggle. I oh, know I'm being silly. caught in there a little bit don't want to bust anything apart I'm probably gonna need to that's oh, coming there's coming it's coming guys just a little bit for nagging it Getting that last piece out probably going to be a pain. Let's see if I can get it in here. Ah, I see that little fins in the way. So I am going to take a little Phillips here. A little Phillips. See if that fits it. It does. Pull my T10 off. Pull the very bottom one off. See if it gives me a little bit. No, nah, it doesn't. Well, looks like we're gonna have to pull it out. I'm determined to not have to pull it out though, I'll tell you what. But I don't want to break my board. The tension is real, guys. Yep, yeah, okay, well, let's pull it out. Let's do it right. Goodness. All right, so to do it right. And then, of course, here's these little white little covers, too. Oops, I'm getting camera here. want to make sure you don't lose those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's it. Two, four, six, seven of them. So I didn't lose them. No, just seven. Yeah, there's only seven. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen all these up. So anyway, these little screws here, get the camera, screw there. So screw-wise, we got, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the seventh screw here that I already pulled, uh, just to lay this board out this way. So that's, let's do that real quick. screws here and I don't know if you really want to see this part but I'll just leave it in and uh, you could always just skip ahead 10 seconds or 20 seconds on your YouTube on your on your YouTube controls I'd estimate skip ahead 20 seconds And these are the little screws with the green, little green goop on there. Uh, just to indicate that you have messed around with this board. Beware, your warranty is now voided. Not that there should be anything wrong with it. Let's shake off any little stuff out. Oh, lost one. Where'd it go? 
I have it right here. Okay, go down here. Shook off the little round tab. Or, uh, sorry, square white button cover. All right, so got that. Should be able to pry this board up. Easy. Easy now. Do I have something else hanging on to it? Let me see. Seems like something's catching it. Did I miss one? Nope, it's just a little snug. Just a little snug in there. Unless it's this piece. Actually, I got it up enough now. I don't even need to pull the whole thing out. Ah, there we go. It's a little snug in there, but it comes out now. Out the back. Going to want to pull this wire sideways in here. They let you get it in there. They don't like to let you get it out. Now, all I'm trying to do is just rock this little cable in here sideways with my little tool, little Allen wrench, just to get the head to clear. Well, if I could reach in from the other side. Pull this sucker out. I don't know why it's stuck over here. Knock the button cover off. Don't we'll lose that. It's just hanging up on the plastic a little bit. That's what it's doing. Up on the very front half. There we go. Tell you what, this thing is in there snug. Mine is at least. Huh. Well, figure this out. Well, it's not going as smoothly as that. Oh, look, oh, I got this plug almost out there. Got it out. Boom, just like that. Okay, you almost want to throw this thing away now. Such a pain to get out. It looks so much easier when he did it. <laughs> All right, so got it out. Let's come right back. I'm gonna recoup here. All right, so getting back to this here, I went and grabbed my um, SRM and I slid it through the back half of it. And now you're seeing me snake through the cord on the front half. I hold it there. It's being the back half right there. You know, this isn't necessarily pretty on how to do this, but uh, you know, you gotta get your hands in here to do this kind of thing. So it's really hard to show you on camera what to do, but this is what happens. So you slide this all the way down until it goes in, in flush. It fits right into the groove there. And uh, put, of course, put your screws in there. But I am pulling it up through the front here. Right here, as you see, got plenty of cord actually uh, to pull through. And uh, I can just plug it in, of course, right here to the board. And I lost a couple more of my little 
button covers here. Just kind of come off. I'm going to leave them off for now so I don't have to keep putting them back on. But what I want to do is, since this can set on the handles itself here without smushing anything internally, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to grab my screws. Now I figured out which way I wanted to have this. I wanted the SRM logo up and that's because my button box is off to the right here or this direction here on the camera and it's going to plug in over here so it's less for it to cool over uh, I think that might be better but you could always you know unbolt this turn it around the other way if you want it to but that's how I'm going to run with it now unless I figure out I need something different to do I actually guess I could just use the stock bolts but I, I have a feeling they might be too long so I'm going to use the supplied stainless steel socket head uh, cap screws that were provided from Sim Racing Machines. And these are four millimeters. Snug them. I'm just going to kind of tighten them, or not tighten them down, but just put them all there. I'll tighten them down afterwards. That was a little bit of a pain because the, the wire is kind of in your way. But you know what? I like these cutouts here because I mean, look, I'm able to get a lot of wrench clearance in here uh, with these with these cutouts. We get my wrench, drop my wrench right in there. So great thinking, great design, and this is actually an all stainless steel uh, plate. So high high quality uh, stuff here. Got the little buttons over here so I don't lose them. One more in there. It's the last one. And I'll come back and tighten them up here in a second. I mean, I guess I could tighten them now, but oh, I've got one more. One more, one more, okay? <laughs> I forget this front one all the time, huh? Boom, just like that. So two, four, six six bolts on the back that's what it looks like really nice clean design yeah that carbon fiber man that looks really sweet matches the carbon fiber on the back of it oh there we go that's a good lighting right there matches the carbon fiber on the back so yeah that's nice except this is real carbon fiber and this is just the faux stuff you know but anyway it has a nice effect it's not like you really look back there but I like to see logos and carbon fiber. I'm a sucker for carbon fiber. So when I look down on this, I see this nice logo of SRM on the top. That looks really sweet to me. Uh, so anyway, yeah, it's just going to go to great. So like it, like it a lot. So now we are going to try not to lose any more buttons. I don't think I got any more here. And I am running this on a, a plastic desk and a rubber uh, static pad here. So I don't, you know, you know, mess up any of the electronics within this thing. But, you know, just give you a quick little look again, how it all looks apart. That's what it looks like, the board. Now, I really didn't, I had to pull all the screws off just enough to, you know, get some uh, relief out of it. Uh, but that was it. And then uh, I was able to snake the, uh, the cord through here. Now I'm just going to plug it in. I can remember to plug it in here, huh? Before we get it all together. Seems like plenty of cord, but it is a little tight. I think I'm gonna put it here on this side. Oh, backwards. My bad. Slides in there nice and tight. And I know you couldn't really see me doing that. My hand's in the way. But you can see what it looks like already done. Nice and tight on there. So yeah, that's good. I'll go ahead and put my screws back in, tighten it up. Let's get 
these in reverse. I'm gonna put my painted ones down here where they went. Keep the same screws in kind of the same location if I can. Itty bitty, man, they're just hard to hold. Be honest. And even more difficult for you to see what I'm actually doing. That has to be real tight. I mean, you want to make sure the board's recessed in there, you know, back where it was. And it's a nice little home. Let's find the other green one there. Get my green ones on. And you just want to go nice and smooth. And again. You don't want to watch this part. Double tap uh, on your uh, fast forward on your YouTube there. You know, 10 second incre increments. Because that's what I do. You like me, uh, people's intro, you know, people spend a lot of time on intros and stuff. And I did mine uh, a while back and I like it. But I know my own intro. So when I go back and review my video, I double tap. <laughs> go fast forward at 10 seconds, you know, or, one, or, or 20 seconds and get past the intro. <laughs> Especially for a channel that you already go to enough, you know, you know their intros. Something new, maybe I'll, I'll watch it, but there's the last one, the bottom one. All right. If I can't turn them by hand, they're, in, they're tight. Tight enough, rather. Alrighty. Nice and cold weather here today in uh, Baytown, Texas. Alright, so got it all back together. Don't really need the screw head no more. Now, all I want to do is put my little rubber caps back on. And as you can see, this isn't a hard process to do, but it is a, uh, a tedious one. But I don't think anybody would have that hard of a time uh, getting it done. Uh, anybody with a little bit of, uh, I don't know, if you can watch this video and see it, you know, between mine and Sim Racing's Garage, uh, you'll be able to do it yourself just fine. So I'll make sure I have all, see, four, five, six, seven. I had seven to begin with. I got seven white little things on, uh, covers on there now. You can look to see what that looks like. That way you know this is how it's supposed to go back together. Uh, so you can double check when you do it yourself to see that, okay, everything's kosher. You didn't have to take off the front plate. I didn't. I actually, I obviously, you know, took all the screws out just enough to loosen it out. Really what was hanging up was here on these tabs here, these little plastic tabs, the board was kind of hanging up on them because you want to pull the board straight out and it's really hard to get a hold of the edges to pull it straight out. So uh, yeah, I got it up enough to get the cable in and out. So that's all that mattered. Alrighty, let's put the front cover on and we will be buttoning it up. Let's not forget our little uh, our little plugs. Oh, also another. Oh, these actually have little uh, things in it. I see just dropped out. How does that go? All right, so this has a little knob on them. And three, 
little washers, something to look for, three little washers and a knob and go inside this. So it looks like the three washers first and then the uh, plastic knob. So yeah, got that discovered for you. Now, to put these three little washers in with my fingers. Drop them in. Knob. Yep, works fine. All right, okay. Let's get back to business here. We had the P right there and it's keyed on the back. So, you know, you could possibly put it this way with the P sideways, right? You know, use some common sense here. Unless you just want to be different. That P sideways there. It is keyed though. Boom. Did it like that. Uh, and you can actually see how it's keyed right here on the top. Uh, get my pointer here, a little pointer here. These little ridges right here, uh, this ridge right here is keyed. So that's an easy way to identify it. See that those two ridges either way, like that. Same thing here. Slides right in. And you got the neutral correctly. Alrighty. Let's slide this baby back on. Just push it down like that. And we're back in business, guys. Look at that. Alright, now I just got to put in my uh, screws. I will grab my T10, my Torx wrench, Torx head. Put it on my handy dandy. A little screw here, or screw gun here. Grab them. And these are just like little plastic wood screws or plastic screws. It digs into the plastic itself, basically. Self tapping. Let me turn it the way y'all can see me do it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Slide that in. Come on, magnet. Sometimes these magnets work for you, sometimes against you. And you'll see the top gap start going away as you tighten this all down. Just make sure you get them all in there because you don't want this thing coming apart on you. The button's flying while you're racing. Especially when you're using a direct drive wheel. Heck, just even the Fanatic wheel is gonna, some certain sims can get kind of violent as well uh, with the torque that it has, just the eight Newton meters. Hopefully this part isn't too boring. Like I said, it is tedious, but uh, you get to see how it all works. Usually instructional videos are tedious. <laughs> so, all right, so we got all the buttons back in. And I am clumsy with this thing right there. So let's go ahead and put the caps on. Like I said, that's keyed. Just slide the, let's find the key there. Boom, just like that. Get the white one on there. Oh, I had to turn this way, I guess. Boom, like that. 
Same with this one. That's keyed. Same thing. All right, got those on. Just got to put the rubber grommets in, which, you know, I don't have screws for it. <laughs> don't know why. Fanatic didn't do that. These are a little bit, I think these are probably the most pain of it all. I mean, it's not hard, it's just, they're a little fiddly. But yeah, you just snug them on down, push them on down with your fingers. You can use a little wrench here to make sure you got it seated in there. The main thing is you want to make, make sure you can toggle your button. Same thing, slide over the little red, red piece, slide it on down over it and there's that boom do like that guys so get everything working all the buttons I'm feeling the actuation on the back side so that's all working I can actually put my key thing back in here on the back in. Now next. Next up is the b and I'll go ahead and just uh, mount that on there too and see which way I want it arranged. It only goes really one way. Now they only give you, um, oh you know what? You know what I forgot to do guys? I forgot to put uh, the screws on there. Let's pop these back off. The uh, nuts and stuff. My bad. Got in a hurry here. Let's pull it off my fingers. Forgot to put these little screws in there. So, washer first, then your nut. You can kind of just get it in there with your finger. I think it makes works better if I go flat here. That part's a little bit of pain, huh? struggle with these nuts is real guys all right yeah I could see why you leave them off <laughs> on the other ones there we go there we go it should thread on real nice and easy at least the first couple threads. Then you can screw it on down with your wrench. It was a little bit tight to get on. And just hand tighten it down. And again, we will repeat this times two more times. And apologize that you can't quite see what I'm doing. You can see there. That's just how it is sometimes. Those went on pretty easy. I'm just tighten it down. Just hand tight. I mean, this is not, it's plastic here, so you know you don't need to be too tight. And you already saw that it actually worked without them. <laughs> so. So yeah, and I just go ahead and just stick these back on one more time. Get it lined up. Lined up. And lined up. Alright guys, now we're done. Alright, this is the nice thing about having your tools in a tray. Your, you know your uh, hardware in a tray is because when you look over and you're like hey I got some extra 
bolts there, what did I forget? So I always recommend you using these. Now I know that some of these bolts are from the original one, the original pieces, so I don't need them, but I do need uh, these three, three mils for the back. So all right, let's go to the back side here. We're gonna put the B&G on here. Uh, it really doesn't really matter which way you put it. But uh, I'm actually gonna have to go from the back side actually from this and I'm thinking I should have probably added that before I screwed it down. I should have probably just put this on here. It would have been easier just to handle it. So, you know, there's a shortcut for you next time is uh, go ahead and attach this B&G first before you uh, screw the unit down to your, to your wheelbase. It makes it a little bit easier because now I'm going to have to reach in here with a little nut so anyway, right there, and this is threaded to begin with, even so. No, it's not threaded. Okay, there you go. I thought my through hole was threaded, guys. It's not. What I'm gonna have to do is pull my little, the little wrenches out that are angled. Uh, that way I can get onto the bolt here and grab for it and go after it. Alright, so that's one and I'm going to want two here. Pretty easy. I mean, they screw in by hand right there. And with a third one here. I don't know why it only comes with three though. That's a little... Um, Disappointing actually. I want all six. So maybe it got left out. Three of them. I'm not sure. Oh, I know why, guys. I know why it only comes with three now. Because this, okay, so this is your collar, right? And I don't know if you can see it, but this part of the SRM uh, plate is lined up perfectly with this nub here that you're going to put a screw in. The reason it only comes with three is because if you were to slide this screw in here and screw it in, the head doesn't clear. Uh, the button head screw doesn't really clear there. So that's probably why it only comes with three. Now, you could have... No, you still couldn't have. Yeah, you can't slide it in either way. I was thinking you could uh, slide it past here first and slide it in, but no. So that's why, I hope this is coming in clear, there you go. That's why he only has three in there, because you can only really access three of the six holes anyways. So, okay, makes sense. Here is, and, and you'll see here where the clarity is, is this one drops in and out easy because there is no, how can I turn this? There's no uh, cast, or, or not cast, no, no nub right here basically. So yeah, that's why. Brilliant. Okay, well, learn something new every day. Still wish I'd put this on first. Because it's kindly in the way. I don't need that out of the way. I'm just going to do it this way. If I had to put this on first, I would have had a lot more room for wrench clearance and I could have just snugged it right down real quick and easy. All right, don't need to be too tight. All right, so I'm gonna snug the other two down here real quick and we're gonna, um, and I'm also gonna not forget to torque these down here real quick. Because, you know, it's just the bolts. But this is what it looks like on there. Here's a quick disconnect uh, for your wheel. So this is going to snap right onto my uh, AccuForce wheel, which is great. And actually, this whole unit is not really... I mean, of course, it's lopsided, right? But it's not really extra heavy. I mean, it's, it's got a little weight. This B&G is the most weight. But the unit that's from SRM is not a lot of weight at all to it. Uh, 
you know, between these two, it doesn't feel much heavier than this. The SRM is about as light as this is here. Uh, so the only real weight you have added is this BNG. I guess if you used a different uh, quick disconnect, I think the QR1s or something like that, that has a lever, uh, those are a little lighter than this. But I just wanted to stick with this one because I really like the action that this provides and boom, just snap it on and turn it and, and uh, it just snaps into place and it's you don't have to have a lever or nothing. I don't have to bust a knuckle on accident or anything like that. It's just snap and go. So I personally like it that way. Anyway, we're going to uh, plug this into the uh, computer and I'm going to pull up the computer program there and you can see uh, how to set your buttons and stuff. So, all right, stay tuned. So here you go. Here is the McLaren wheel with the BNG uh, setup SRM. And just gonna click it into place like so. Boom, just like that. Look at that. Now the only thing I noticed between uh, this setup is being that this button, it stays in all the time on the AccuForce, whereas with this quick release, I have to push it in to uh, slide this past it. Uh, can't really do it with one hand like this, but. You see, as I try to move it back, it is, it's going to hit this pin. I have to actually push that pin in. So if you know of a way to keep that pin in all the time, I know it's a safety feature for a real race car, but but uh, hit me up in the comments. Uh, how do I keep this pin locked down all the time instead of it being up? Because on the AccuForce, it's actually down all the time. So you don't have that problem with it being popped up. I'm sure there's a way. Anyway. Uh, I'm going to fire up the software here real quick. I am going to plug in the USB over here just so you see what's going to go on. Let me get it over here. See what happens. It's setting up a device. We're setting up your club sport wheel. Look at that. It's called a club sport wheel. Uh, Fanatic Club Sort Wheel Base is set up and ready to go. And see, when I come over here, it is the Fanatic Club Sport Wheel Base, and here is the properties. And say yes. And then there it is. Neat. That's weird. Doesn't have any rotation to it. Weird that it recognizes it like that though. Let me see. It should. Properties. It should technically give me all the buttons, but it's not. Obviously I don't want to update or anything. Mouse. Nope. Well, I wonder if I turn that on. Not applicable. Steering wheel. There. Huh. So I'm going to see if the D-pad works. Okay, so the D-pad works. And that works. Uh, let's see. But it's not showing, it's not recognizing the rest of the wheel. Uh, but I'm not seeing the buttons uh, per per se. What I'm think I should be seeing in there, which is weird. No, it's plugged in because you know that's working. Uh, D-pad in and stuff. So let's jump into see if I can find something else here real quick. Uh, button display here real quick. Hold on. Alrighty, so as you were seeing a while ago, what I was looking for is something like this here, like you see on the Sim Experience. I'll blow it up here, so just in case you're on your cell phone. But when you look at the AccuForce properties with the Sim Experience here, uh, I'm looking for all these buttons and stuff to be on there. So when I go mashing buttons, I can see which ones are registering and stuff. That is not the case on this one. Uh, so as you can see here, this little plus sign is moving as I turn my wheel left and right. It doesn't really matter what wheel you have plugged into the AccuForce. You know, the AccuForce is being read off the motor itself. Uh, so you can have any wheel, any wheel box you want uh, plugged into the AccuForce. That's actually one of the things that makes this so moddable and, and so much more fun is that you can 
modify any existing wheel like like the Fanatic McLaren that I have here uh, with SRMs a uh, little uh, with, with their uh, with their fix with their um, what would you call it I guess their their uh, conversion kit <laughs> get some words here um, it's actually working fantastic actually uh, highly actually recommend this uh, mod if you want to use your McLaren wheel on uh, say an Acu Force or OSW or something like that so uh, but I don't get this uh, set up, but the great news is, is that it still works just fine. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it here. Actually, now when I pull up the properties for it, I get that test, right? Um, <laughs> everything's blank as, as opposed to earlier it wasn't. And I'd hit reset, uh, reset the default just to see if I could uh, get it to populate more, and that didn't work. It just took everything away, so... <laughs> Uh, it is what it is, but it's still registered as this club sport wheelbase. No big deal. It all works just fine. And, uh, and here I'll go over and show you what it works on as far as what doesn't work, what does work. So here's a blown up image of the wheel because obviously I'm not filming this over my shoulder at this point. Uh, but all these buttons here actually work just fine in game. And, you know, I tested that with Seto Corsa and ACC as well uh, real quickly everything works uh, this blue button actually works here so you know as you dial it over here uh, to the A position you know you can do your uh, adjustable for your clutch and stuff this one here just like Sim Racing Garage it, it said this doesn't work this one here does work this is always on so each setting you put it on is always on so what you could do is just say if you have it on 8 press the reset button here or the uh, uh, setup button here and it'll turn 8 on and then press it again and it'll turn 8 off so you could actually map each individual one uh, to something I, I think that's actually just a pain <laughs> but uh, I wouldn't use that feature and uh, you know kinda disappointed that Fnatic hasn't talked game developers into utilizing these yet so but you know it is what it is um, these toggles work great. Uh, you know, all the buttons and stuff work great. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, working fantastic actually. And now the wheel is actually even lighter than the bigger round rim, so I'm getting a lot more forces and stuff. So, let me launch into a game real quick. Uh, we will do this set of Corsa uh, responsive. My favorite. Found that actually off the. Um, off the drive there. I get this little error message here with a silent usually looked up for VR. It still launches the game, but I pulled this off the of Owner's Club. Owner's Club is actually great for uh, downloading uh, stuff as far as setting up. I'll get more into that in my actually re re final review for the uh, Aki Force. But here we go. Let's just go into settings real quick and controls. And I actually just named this Aki Force V2 McLaren. Uh, but as you can see here, this is turning. Hopefully this is dial it up here a little bigger. As you can see here, it is turning left to right. Uh, of course, my throttle brake and all that stuff, that's actually hooked up to my uh, clutch port V3. My hand brake down here at the bottom, uh, that is hooked up to my Husenfeld uh, hand brake, uh, which is really good. Uh, the shifters, these are right now hooked up to the paddles on the McLaren rim. As you can see, those are working just fine. And go to secondary here. Uh, I have my DSD button box hooked up. So these are working as far as the dials go. You'll see them populate. But as far as the rim itself, my traction control is to my toggles where I usually like it. Uh, so, you know, up and down. And the other toggle, left and right. So that's all working. Curs uh, is uh, I didn't register at right the second. I think because I have it zoomed in. I was having that problem a while ago. Well, it does actually work, but uh, set of course is a little bit finicky. I noticed sometimes there's a little bit of a delay on things working. But let me just say clear, and I'm gonna click this assign and. Glance. Oh, I had that as a glance left. I forgot. Okay. Um, what did I use for curves? Okay, so this one's going to be curves. I actually use my big end button uh, for curves. Okay, there we go. And then DRS is the right. But I do say that I still do notice a little bit of delay sometimes 
uh, from a set of course of picking these up. Uh, let me see, where's my glance left? I'll reassign that. My glance left was this further out button uh, on the McLaren wheel. But you get the picture here. Uh, everything is actually working just fine. Change camera and all that. Uh, so yeah, great stuff. Highly recommend this rim. I'm going to show you the over the picture or over the shoulder of the rim in action. Uh, but yeah, it's it's really good, guys. Uh, really like it. Uh, you can find sim racing machines uh, online, of course. Uh, SimRacingMachines.com, and then you'll. So if you go to this just to show you sim racing machine this is their old website uh, but just click on this new web shop right here that's where you want to go and then boom there it is so wheel conversions and the one I'm using is uh, the McLaren which is right here fanatic McLaren and just to let sh let you know if you're looking for it for the Aki force that is uh, new QR, no QR, I'm sorry, uh, will bolt to my base. That's your choice, but if you want to use, the, if you're using the Q1R, uh, the 70 or 50 millimeter, you have that choice, he supplies it. You look here on this outer ring, that's the 70, the inner one is the 50. Uh, I'm using the AccuForce version, which is the BG that you saw me use. And I use actually the standard USB cable. You have a couple other choices here as well. But uh, yeah, that works good. $115 uh, for the kit. And so, yeah, working really good. Uh, let me, oh, they do actually have, this is like a kid's, an adult kid's store here, you know. They do have it for the 2018 coming. Uh, he's still waiting, I guess, on his, his setup uh, to come. He had pre-ordered his, and uh, I'm sure he, you know, he hasn't either got it yet or he's testing it right now to get it working right. But that's to be coming here uh, soon as well. So I don't plan on converting mine over yet, but uh, it's very tempting. If I end up being AccuForce being the uh, my main wheel choice, then I will convert it over. Uh, but we'll see. Right now I'm saving it for the DD2. Anyway, that's enough about that. Uh, that's where you need to go. Check out the over-the-shoulder gameplay of this uh, wheel in action. Uh, but other than that, I highly recommend their setup. It works beautifully. Uh, they can't help that the software's not registering it just right. Uh, but as you can see, signing your uh, controls and stuff are working just fine. Already, it looks like it's rolling. So I wanted to close this uh, review out with about the sim racing machines. Uh, conversion kit for my McLaren GT3 rim. It actually works flawlessly. Uh, it was a joy to actually do the conversion. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. This is part of you know sim racing. Is, is I like tinkering. So it's a lot of fun to be able to um, buy quality product and put it on another quality product, and it all works. So instead of you having to be a DUI kit, you know, do it yourself. Uh, kit, but when I ordered it, uh, it came over really fast uh, from them from overseas. I want to say he's in Russia. Uh, I have to look again. But uh, anyway, it came over fast. It, he emails you the instructions, very similar to what you see in this video uh, as well. Uh, but everything is detailed out in his instructions and email, so uh, really easy to follow. Actually, uh, of course, I use Sim Racing's Garage's video to to do it, but. Uh, yeah, easy stuff, as you saw. You just want to set around 30 minutes of time to take your time on it, do it right, make sure you don't you know, strip your screws out, over-tighten anything, put it all back together. Uh, don't forget the, uh, the screws like I did. <laughs> but anyway, um, let's check this out just one last time before I do. I'm going to close the video with the over-the-shoulder view of this in action. Look at that, SRM, just nice quality aluminum anodized black uh, piece with the carbon fiber uh, back plate on there look at that that is so so nice it matches the back of this rim really well which you know not like you're really looking at the back of this rim much uh, <laughs> but it looks cool when it's sitting out on your desk and stuff it's just it's a nice quality piece of hardware sitting out when you're not using it and actually it's fun to use 
uh, when you're doing it. So, you know, clicking it in here, hold the collar, BG just snaps right in. I love that. That's just so satisfying. But uh, when you're out there on track driving and stuff, you feel more forces through this than I do with the bigger uh, round rims on the AccuForce or Momo uh, rim and stuff, just because it's more condensed. Uh, so the forces are coming out to the edges of the rim and uh, feeling real good with it. It feels really nice. So basically no loss in power when doing this conversion. Overall weight, I didn't. I don't have a scale light enough to weigh them both, but they felt almost identical between the two. I'm sure there's a few ounces difference. This one feels, you know, just a tad lighter in my hand than say the AccuForce uh, button box does. Who cares? I mean, you've got a direct drive wheel. It's going to have plenty of power to to roll, you know, to, to spin these things up. So, but I haven't been disappointed. I'm actually feeling quite a bit of forces through here. Uh, I'm really, really digging it. So it's fun to be able to utilize all my buttons that I like to use. And uh, yeah. Oh, just one note. He does actually have a uh, magnetic, uh, a, uh, magnetic shifters that he sells for it as well. I'm probably going to upgrade to those as well. I do enjoy the stock Fnatic ones. I really dig the burnt orange because uh, it matches the GT3 logo. But I will probably upgrade uh, to the magnetic ones because I've been playing with them uh, on it on my other rim that I upgraded some uh, the stock AccuForce Force ones to these carbon fiber ones. Um, more on that later. But um, I think I'm going to check out SRM's uh, magnetic shifters as well for this because this is really my favorite rim to use and uh, one that I'll use the most. I'll use the other one. You know, really you only need two rims for me. I only need two rims. I don't know how many you need, but <laughs> I need two. I need a GT style rim like this to use and I need a round rim to do rally racing on. So that's really all I need. So I'm going to maximize both of them to their fullest potential and enjoy it. So SRM has actually helped me do that. Um, with ease and it's it's fun as heck to modify this stuff but all right all right well i don't want to ramble on trying to cut that out check out the over the shoulder of it in action with some um the set of courses or acc and uh yeah leave some comments below if you have any questions and i'll try to uh answer them for you we'll see you next time on the track i'm out Right, mate, race is about to start. Hold on.